So at the minute I'm working on another Mercedes. This is an SL350 and it's in for a full system upgrade. Within this video, I'm basically gonna break down each section of the job, go through them and look at them in a little bit more detail. Uh, we've got stuff like speaker adapters, uh, the install itself, amplifier mount, DRC mount, a few other little bits. So there's quite a lot to go through. Uh, this vehicle did have a system fitted before, which at this point I have removed and put it back to stock, ready for my new system to go in. Uh, I have made the speaker adapters as well, so I've designed and printed them. They're ready to assemble, but first we'll take a look at the new system that's going in. So I'm using the Audison Prima F8.9 bit amplifier, eight channel amp, built in DSP, really good for these sort of OEM integration installs. We've got the Audison Voce six and a half and three inch, and we've actually used the Hertz Melee Legend tweeter instead of the Voce. Honestly, it was just a stock issue from the supplier, so just did that as an upgrade for the customer. I'll also be using the Audison Bit DMI because this vehicle has the most ring in it, so we're able to tap into it, pull a digital signal from the stereo straight to the amplifier to make for a really nice clean setup. So this is the OEM housing that all the speakers bolt into, and then that'll bolt to the door as one. These are all my adapters. You've got the six and a half, the three inch and the tweeter. This is the six and a half inch adapter that was installed. Um, it's fine, it serves a purpose, but it's always frustrating when you see things like the screws sticking out the back, uh, which is kind of a reoccurring theme within the previous install. So I'm glad all that's coming out. So these are what I'm using in the speaker adapters. They're an M4 brass threaded insert. Uh, if you're not familiar with these, they just sit inside a hole. You heat them up, they drop in, the plastic melts, then there's knurling on the side. So when the plastic melts, it sort of seeps into that knurling. And then when it's cooled, that's a nice strong fix. You can't pull it back out. There is a specific tool for this. Uh, it's kind of like a hot press. Uh, solder and iron works just as well. You've got to center it over your hole, wait for that to heat up, and then it'll start to sink in. But then just wait for that to get to depth. Make sure it's square. And now once that sets, that's not coming back out the other way. So do exactly the same with the M3 inserts. Once that's done, I can start assembling the housing. Nowadays, I do tend to 3D print most of my speaker adapters rather than make them out of birch ply on the CNC or router. Nothing wrong with doing it that way, it's just this is my preferred method. I like sitting there at the computer, going through the design. You can add little angles to it and just get a little bit more detailed, like thin areas where the ply might not hold up it's absolutely fine with the 3D print. And I can also take advantage of the things like the threaded inserts, use those machine screws, and it just makes for a really clean install. So they fit really well. They are coming back out. This was just a test fit, because I've got sound treatment doing both the doors still. Um, my wiring's through. So I've run that through the rubber boot between the door and the car. There's no plug in there, so I can just go straight through with that. Nice, easy run. Uh, this is now fully active, whereas before it was a, a passive front, so that's just a nice upgrade within itself. <clears throat> and this is the previous shop's wiring. So these are the original cables that went to the original speakers. What they've done is come off the other end of them and use that as their input into the Fix 82. So I need to pull this through and just tidy all this wiring up because we're not using any of that. Uh, this is just, I hate seeing things like this. I don't know what the reason is for, for having to rip that. I don't know, I'm very picky. Might not bother some people, but I just hate seeing it. Um, but yeah, next thing for me is the amplifier mount. So I have designed that already and I just need to machine it on the CNC. So I've decided to machine this out of birch ply rather than 3D print it, as there's no real benefit to this being made out of plastic. In terms of the design, it's basically a platform where the amp and the DMI can bolt straight to. I have added these feet because where it sits in the vehicle, there's these sort of ribs in the bodywork. So I've added those feet just to offset it to make sure the mount sits nice and flat. On the underside of the platform, I've also added these four pockets that the feet can locate into just to make sure everything lines up properly. So now that's all tidied up and finished, I can glue all the feet on, seal the wood, paint it, and then install my M4 wood inserts, which line up with the amp and the DMI. So 
So this area is under the rear storage compartments and you've got those four pins which are M6 which line through with my holes in the feet. So the amp and DMI are mounted and I finished off all the wiring in the back so that's all powered up fine. Doors are finished, wiring's done, everything's assembled, sound treatment as well, just need the door cards going back on. So one thing I haven't touched on is the rear speakers. These are from the previous install and the customer just asked if there's anything we can do with them to change the setup. So we went back and forth, actually landed on the Audison Prima two inch drivers. And I know it doesn't sound like a fair trade off straight away, but we've got to think about these six and a half are mounted into quite a flimsy panel. Uh, there's no depth behind them, there's no real enclosure there for them to actually perform in. So in my opinion, that's not the best environment for these to be in. Um, but with the two inches, just above this panel, there's another grill where there's two stock speakers. So the plan is just to replace those with the two inch, make some new adapters, and they're just going to perform really well in that environment. It's, it's almost perfect for them. And all we're really asking from these is, is a bit of rear fill. So uh, I'm, you know, I'm confident that's a good choice over these. And the other plus is we get to put this back to stock. Unfortunately, at a cost, this panel was very expensive to replace, but this was the only visible aftermarket piece in the vehicle. So along with that decision of going with the two inch drivers, we did want to put this back to stock. So this is what we're working with. It's basically a square housing attached to the original speaker. So all I need to do is recreate that. So I'll design them, print them up. I'll get all that assembled, give the system one last run through just to make sure everything's fine before I tune it. So now these are finished printing, we'll have for the light for light mount. I have made mine slightly bigger, uh, just so it's a bit more of a snug fit as the original housing was, was a little bit loose. So that's a really nice fit now. Assembly wise, same as the front, threaded inserts, two inch can bolt to the back with machine screws and then all that can bolt into the original fixings on the, the bigger housing. I've also added a two pin plug, so I've pinned this up, just a short run from the speaker to an original plug holder. I thought it'd be nice to utilise that, make it much easier for me during the installation as well, as I don't have to wire it directly to the speaker, I can just simply plug it in. So I've added sound treatment to the rear whilst the rear panels were out. I've taped down all my cables properly and routed them. Now the housings are fitted. I've done a test of the system, everything is working. I'm not going to reassemble it any further at this point. I want to move on to the DRC controller mount and then once I've finished all that, I can assemble it as one. So this is the ashtray insert at the centre console where the customer and myself agreed we'd put the DRC controller. I don't like modifying OEM stuff if I can help it. I have had permission to do it, but I spoke to Mercedes when I was ordering the, the rear trim and got a price on this, which came back at 200 and something pounds. So with that in mind, I don't want to cut into this. So I had to get thinking of what's, what's the best option to do to get the same result. Cause I want to retain all these features on it, like this gear and everything and the way it locks in. Um, so what I've come to is I can take a mold of it. So I do mold making as another part of the business. Uh, manufacturing products. So I've got all these tools to hand. So it's not really much more effort for me to take a mold of that. I can get an identical part then, and I can fabricate my mount into that one, leave the customer with this one. So if he ever puts it back to stock, he's got this one to hand, he can just put straight back in. So this is gonna be a two part silica mold. The first thing I need to do is embed the part into clay where I want my split line between the two halves to be. This is something I've sort of already calculated. So I've looked at the part and seen if there's any undercuts or any part of it that's gonna trap the part in the mold when I try and take it out. Now I've done that, I can box it all in, add my cotton buds for my air holes, because again, part orientation and air holes are something that need to be considered because when the resin goes in, there's gonna be air in the mold, so you need the air to escape.
Once I've poured that half, it's set. I can flip everything over, remove the clay, clean everything up, and then pour the second half. Same thing again, wait for that to set. And then by the end of it, I'm left with my two part mold. So now both these halves are set, I can demold it, take the original part out and then get it ready to pour into to make the new one. Um, just so you know, there's no damage done to this original part uh, by doing this whole process. Obviously if there was, then this wouldn't have been the route to go down. Uh, so that's all gonna be fine once it comes out. I have also printed a DRC controller mount whilst this was setting, just ready for me. So when I get the new part out of this, I can get straight into that and then fabricate the two together. So by removing the original part and putting the mold back together, I'm left with the void, the same shape as the original part was. So now I can mix my resins up, pour it into the mold, the resin will fill up that void. And then once that's set, I'll have that new part to work with. So this is now ready to demold. The first pour is always a bit of an unknown because as much as you can plan for all your air holes, um, you're not going to know until you've actually poured it. And I think there is going to be an air bubble in this. Yeah, there is two air holes in there. So I just need to drill some more air holes in that area and then uh, just pour another one. Yeah, I think we're good. So yeah, we've got the original, the first pour with the air holes and then the second pour, which has come out perfect. I do want to point out that this has literally copied everything. So the, the teeth on the rack, they're all identical. They'll function exactly the same as the original part. All the part numbers on it, they will transfer it over. Any scuffs, any marks that are on the original, they'll all be present on the molded version, uh, even down to the surface finish and the texture. So yeah, it's just really interesting stuff. There's loads of possibilities with it. Uh, you know, stuff like this. But now I'm going to start the DRC mount and get that finished. So although I've made my mount as small as I can within the design, it still doesn't fit within the ashtray. So first thing to do is make the opening of the ashtray bigger and then make the mount smaller. So the mount will nest within the ashtray. So yeah, I knew this was going to be tight, but not quite this tight. I've actually shaved so much off this. I have broken through. Uh, in this area, a couple of other areas. But be really careful there where the rack is, because if I disturb that any more, I'm going to end up losing that mechanism, which is one thing I did want to keep by doing this. Uh, I've got a hole in the side there, which is for the cable, but turns out I can't run it there. So I'll blank that off once I've glued it in. So now the mount's in position, I can pin it into place with some mitre mate. This is sort of my initial fix just so I can get the position right and it's not going to move when I move on to the two-part glue to do the permanent fix. Once the glue's set, I can move on to shaping it with the Dremel by hand with sandpaper and just going through the filler process. I'm not going to go into it too much, but it is just basically back and forth, sanding, filling, sanding, filling until you end up with that sort of final shape. I mean, there's not too much involved in this because there's really not a lot of surface area to, to shape, um, but you still have to go through that process and go through the grit. So just before I move on to paint, I have got to repair that hole I cut out for the cable. All I've done is I've cut the same part off the first pore, the one with the air holes, use that as an infill, just glued that into place, body worked it, and now it's all patched up, ready to paint. So it's all done, I'm gonna test fit this now, I'll just show you how it fits in. So this gear lines through the rack, so that runs on that. You've got a little notch, which this lever locks into. So it just drops in as, as the original one did. Push it down, that lever will lock in, and then that's just in position now. And then to release this whole assembly, just pull the lever back, and it still comes up with that dampened action. Uh, so yeah, really happy with how that's come out. So now that's finished, I can make a start on reassembling the car. 
that new rear panel looks so much cleaner than what was there before and I'm really happy we went down that route and replaced it. I've also ordered some new door car clips. I know it's quite a lot of those were broken, so I've gone round and just removed any of the broken ones and replaced them. The DRC mount's also in. Really happy with how that's looking now it's in the car. Nice, tucked out the way. And just the whole thing is coming together really well now. So the last thing to do is set up and tune the system. As I'm using a bit product, I can use the Audison Bit Tune, which is basically a piece of equipment from Audison, which sort of assists you in tuning. So I will use the auto level setting, the auto time alignment, and I'll send a flat EQ out to preset A. I'll only use this as a reference or kind of like a second opinion. I'll never send a vehicle out with this as the final tune because I always go back and tune by ear, but I've just got that on preset A that can bounce between as a reference. So a useful tool is the phase detection. I will use this just to double check my work. So go around each individual speaker, the speaker will pulse and it'll tell me if it's in or out of phase. And if it is out of phase, then obviously I can go back to my wiring and just correct it there. So now after doing this, everything has come back in phase, which is good. Now I can move on to setting my crossover points. The way I normally do this is I'll play pink noise through each pair of speakers. I've got the RTA up on the computer, which is linked to the bit tune, so I can physically see what response they're giving me. I'll take a picture and then go through each, each pair of speakers, taking pictures, and I've got that data at the end that I can sort of look at and see where each speaker naturally rolls off. One important thing to do while doing this is to expand the range of what the speaker's playing in the DSP. So we don't want to be seeing where we've actually set the crossover at as the roll off. Uh, so if we expand that range to way past where we would set it, but within limits, uh, we can see that natural roll off and it'll just give us a really good indication to where they want to be crossed over at. So once I've determined where I'm setting my crossover points at, I'll move forward with the rest of the process on the bit tune. And then once that's complete, I can just carry on tuning it by ear. So at this point, I'm looking for three things, levels, overall tone, and positioning. And to do this initially, I'll use the, the, just the basic tools. It's a fully active system, so I've got individual speaker level control. I can work through those until everything sounds balanced. Uh, time alignment, I can go through that, double check it with the tape. I can bounce between what the bit tune gave me on preset A and just double check that. Uh, yeah, and just work through them. Once I've finished all that and I'm happy with how that's sounding, I can move on to the EQ. Now, initially I'll use the EQ as more of a correction tool. So I will look at the RTA, I'll take another measurement and just see what I'm working with, if there's any, any big dips or peaks and try and smooth them out. Not to a flat response, because that never really sounds any good, but just see what I can do with them. Once I've done that, then I'll move on to actually shaping the sound and it's, it's really minimal. I'm not talking, you know, big smiley face EQs or anything. I'll look at the list of songs and artists that the customer sent me and I'll work towards them. Um, but we are talking really small adjustments. Just we're after um, the reproduction of the sound accurately. So I can continue making all my adjustments. I'll normally spend what, about an hour on it, walk away from it at that point, just to let my ears normalize again then go back to it and carry on and just keep doing this until I go back to it and I'm happy with the result. So yeah, it's all complete, back together, ready for collection. Uh, I know this turned into quite a long video, so if you have made it this far, thanks for, for sticking around, but the stuff in this install I didn't even know I was doing before I started, like the mold making. But I am glad I got a chance to film that and put it in this video. I mean, out of the whole thing, that's probably my favorite part of this install, just the way all that came together. So if you did enjoy it, I'll leave some links to some other similar videos I've done at the end of this video. And yeah, hopefully you got something out of this. And thanks for watching.